My mum flew up from London to come and sail with us, and as this was the first time I'd seen her in three years, I was determined to make it fun. We put on new engine mounts, installed new batteries, and fixed up the packing gland, and after this we were confident for the next leg of the journey. Wow, it really smells like fish now. the baby solidly at anchor that's where we may be headed to that Alborolis archipelago about 10 hours sail away and there was a little fish I don't know if they're still there Geraldton nice little town a nice town to get marine things fixed for sure, but in the whole time we were there, this was probably the most exciting activity I saw anyone do. I knew it was time to move on. Hey, hey. 2.20 in the morning, and leaving Jero, all the umbrellas, new batteries, new engine mount, new gland packing, hopefully, in for a slightly less stressful sail than previously. Joined by a mother. Very nice. Very nice. Okay, way over there. Where we come from, Geraldton, with Captain oh, Captain Tim put us up at one o'clock this morning to leave, and able-bodied crew member Sarah, <laughs> whose stomach wasn't entirely able the whole time, but pretty good going. And as you can see. Reports of the Abrolhos being basically a giant aquarium in the middle of the ocean are completely under-exaggerated, if anything. On our way in, we were surprised by an Antarctic mink whale, which unfortunately I didn't manage to catch on video, but the closer we got, the more the ocean started to teem with life. After about 12 hours in the water, the islands finally started to appear like little specks on the horizon. They would be very, very easy to miss without the wonders of modern GPS. Abrolhos, the name, comes from a Portuguese term which means open your eyes. I did my absolute best to practice this on the way in. We picked our way slowly into the Pelsark group keeping our eyes open as islands appeared in front of us like mirages on the horizon. This was to be our first, but thankfully not last time, sailing through haphazardly charted waters full of reefs. And just like that, we were treated to one of the most incredible things I've ever seen in the sea. I do not trust you. Oh. No, I think they're going to come up. Whoa, it's got a fish! Really? Yeah. Whoa. Oh, that's amazing. Sea world. Eat your orca torturing, dolphin imprisoning, bloody heart out, mate. Are you actually shitting me? <laughs> so we're leaping out with a fish in its mouth. Come on, Jam. Oh! <laughs> he came as I said it. He's coming back. With my mum on the bow and Sarah up the rapports, 
we picked our way through the reefs down some very conveniently placed lateral markers to the southern end of the Pelsock group where we found a mooring buoy and tied up for the night. Big shout out to DPCA and WA for making yachting quite easy in these sketchy places. As the first day broke in the Abrolhos, we were pretty certain we'd sailed off the edge of the world and into a marine paradise. And what better thing to do in a marine paradise than go for a quick little snorkel. We were treated to some absolutely phenomenal water visibility. At times it seemed as if the boat was just floating in midair. This was to be the first of many snorkels and was our least successful in terms of marine life. It was very shallow and we just did a drift over the inner reef, but unfortunately I have to admit to full maker's number one sin. I left the boat in such haste the other times, including my first spearfish, that I forgot the GoPro on board and only managed to capture a few little bits from our first time. The following does absolutely no justice to the plethora of species that we spotted on following dives. However, we live and learn and for the rest of Coral Bay and all the way up the coast, I managed to take the GoPro with every single time.
Our next little excursion was to land, where we were absolutely amazed to find a beach made only of shells. We walked down it, picking our way here and there, finding little bits of old shipwrecks that had been washed up. Definitely the Batavia, I reckoned. I was being sarcastic. <laughs> From the beach, we spotted both sea lions and dolphins swimming around, and Sarah and I hopped in the dinghy to go and see if we could investigate. Unfortunately, we didn't manage to get any good footage of them up close. I noticed another boat had pulled into the anchorage, and on our way back, I pulled over and met Tom and Innes, who were more than happy to take me for my first spearfish, which was phenomenal. We were also very lucky to meet Mike and Claire Lathuris of SV Crackers, an absolutely cracking couple of their awesome. You just seen dolphins. <laughs> the rest of our time in the Abrolhos was like a beautiful marine groundhog day. We speared, we snorkeled, we cooked, we relaxed. It was exactly what the magazines try to sell you as the perfect sailing experience, and I couldn't recommend the islands more to anyone who's thinking of visiting. With no one else to surf with and coming off a freshly broken ankle, I wasn't able to get out to the outer reefs, but wow, is there some potential there.
Lim. You're helping me do the dinner. Now they're getting greedy. We had three very nice days in the Rollers. Could easily spend a lifetime here. Um, incredible marine life, incredible fishing, and we got very lucky in getting it with almost no wind. But there's a big system coming through, and we are going to head up to Denham and then Carnarvon to shelter a bit from that. So we're going to leave today, have probably two relatively intense days sailing, and then hopefully be in Steep Point by Monday morning to catch the flow tide over Steep Point. Who knows?